Introduction to Theater, written by Jacob Shearer, is brought to you by San Luis Obispo County Office of Education, Wine Country Theater in Paso Robles, and the Sloco Arts Collaborative. Hello, I'm Jacob Shearer. And I'm Veronica Serber. We will be presenting you with an educational video on stage fright, auditions, and monologues. We will explain what stage fright is and discuss techniques on how to use it to your advantage. We will also go through the audition process as well as how to prepare and perform monologues. To be, or not to be, that is sorry, the question. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I mean, y yes, I'm, yes, but if you don't mind a note, or, or, to be, or, not to be. Let's try this, to be or not to be, that is the question. No. Don't lose focus. To be or not to be, that is the question. <laughs> To be or not to be, that is the question. <laughs> to be or not to be, that is the question. <laughs> <laughs> to be or not to be. <laughs> to be or not to be, that is the question. <laughs> In our last video, we discussed the origins of theater and its ancient styles. Today we will discuss classical theater and how it evolved into the modern theater of today. Many forms of theater emerged in the West between the 15th and 19th centuries. Commedia dell'arte and melodrama, as well as a more realistic approach and natural dialogue became the new standards. To be or not to be, all the world's a stage. Now is the winter of our discontent. If you're familiar with any of these quotes, then you're familiar with the playwright Shakespeare. He says for Brutus' sake, he finds himself beholding. To us all. Aye. The best he speak no harm to Brutus here. Aye, no. Aye, this Caesar was a tyrant. Aye. Nay, that's certain. We are blessed that Rome is rid of him. Aye. Aye. So let us see. Gentle Aye. Romans. Let him speak, friends. Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is oft interred with their bones. So let it be with Caesar. The noble Brutus hath told you Caesar was ambitious. If it was so, it was a grievous fault. And grievously hath Caesar answered it. Here, under leave of Brutus and the rest, for Brutus is an honourable man. So are they all, all honourable men. Come I to speak in Caesar's funeral. He was my friend. Considered as one of the greatest dramatists and master of tragedy and comedy, Shakespeare is often described as the best writer of the English language. Shakespeare was born in approximately 1564 and died in 1616. Known as the Bard or a professional storyteller, his work includes 39 plays and 154 sonnets and three large narrative poems. His plays have been performed more than any other playwright. As Shakespeare was writing plays in England, Commedia dell'arte, comedy of the profession, was thriving in Italy. Often involving stock characters and improvisation, Commedia dell'arte was a traveling troupe of theater professionals that performed throughout the countryside. Oh! 
pull up the table and get under it. What? Why there? Under the table. And once you're there, take care that you're neither seen nor heard. Well, I will indulge you. Since I gave my word to see you through this infantile charade. Once it is over, you'll be glad we played. <sighs> What? But. Whatever I may say, you must excuse, as part of the deceit I'm forced to use, I shall employ sweet speeches to the task of making that imposter drop his mask. I'll gladly stop when you decide that all your fears are fully satisfied, and count on you when you have seen what sort of man he is to intervene, and not to expose me to his odious lust any moment longer than you feel you must. <sighs> Remember... You're to save me from my plight whenever... <coughs> Hush, he's here. Get out of sight. In France, during the mid-1600s, Moliere emerged as one of the best poets and playwrights. Many consider him the best writer ever of the French language and holds a prominent spot amongst writers of world literature. Through the patronage of aristocrats, much like Shakespeare, Moliere's great works Tartuffe and Le Misanthrope, along with many others, are still performed today. The 1700s brought a surge in famed performers and the proliferation of theater spaces throughout the world. This century shifted the focus from writers to the performers and the performance spaces they performed in. The Globe Theater in London was originally built in 1599 by Shakespeare's company. Many of Shakespeare's plays were presented here, including Hamlet and Othello. The Globe was an outdoor theater with some covered seating, but the yard in the middle was open to the sky. By 1600, London theaters like the Globe could house up to 3,000 people in the audience for the most popular plays. With several theaters offering plays most afternoons, this meant that between 10,000 and 20,000 people a week were going to London theaters. The Globe Playhouse attracted commoners and gentry alike, and it brought people of all classes together. Today, the Globe Theatre is a modern building, but it still retains many of its architectural elements of the original playhouse. The 1800s brought forth two types of theatrical experience, melodrama and vaudeville. Melodrama puts a sensationalized plot that appeals to the audiences, and exaggerated characters with songs and orchestration highlighting the action. Vaudeville is considered the heart of American show business. Rarely involving a moral or psychological intention, vaudeville is often based on a comedic situation, poetry, or dramatic composition with ballet or musical numbers breaking up the dialogue. Stand-up comedy, drag shows, burlesque, and many other fringe types of entertainment found homes in vaudeville. The most famous vaudevillian was Charlie Chaplin, who revolutionized the film industry with his silent film comedies. When I was a lad, I served a term as office boy to an attorney's firm. I cleaned the windows and I swept the floor and I polished up the handle of the big front door. He polished up the handle of the big front door. I polished up that handle so carefully that now I am the ruler of the king's navy. He polished up the handle so carefully that now he is the ruler of the king's navy. As office boy, I made such a mark that they gave me the post of a junior clerk. I served the writs with a smile so bland, and I copied all the letters in a big round hand. He copied all the letters in a big round hand. I copied all the letters in a hand so free that now I am the ruler of the king's navy. He copied all the letters in a hand so free that now he is the ruler of the king's navy. In serving writs, I Across the Atlantic, the in Britain, the creative team of dramatist W.S. Gilbert and composer Arthur Sullivan collaborated on 14 operas between 1871 and 1896, most notably H.M.S. Pinafore, The Pirates of Penzance, and The Mikado. They created fanciful worlds where reality and fantasy collided with musical flair. Coupled with the vaudevillian style of the U.S. and Canada, Gilbert and Sullivan helped usher in the emergence of American musical theater. In a future episode, we will discuss how the American musical changed the theatrical world, as well as performers and playwrights in the 20th and 21st centuries. 
For our first warm up today, we're going to do a breathing buzzing exercise. We're going to inhale, we're going to use that diaphragm, that muscle right here in our midsection. We referenced it in our last video. We talked about that tire around us, that, that invisible tire that we want to expand. We want to inflate it as we inhale. So I'm going to inhale for five counts. I'm going to think about expanding that tire. And then when I exhale, I'm going to do that buzzing sound, that brrrr with my lips. All right, here we go. Jacob's going to count for us. We're going to go ahead and inhale for five. We're going to exhale. Okay, the next one, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to inhale for five. We're going to hold for five. And we're going to exhale for five. So think about expanding that tire around us. Jacob, can you count for me? Yes, of Here course. we go. Ready, breathe in. Five. One, two, three, four. Hold. Two, three, four. Out. Two, three, four, five. Perfect. All right, we're going to do that one more time. This time we're going to inhale for a count of five. We're going to hold for five, and then we're going to exhale for ten, getting all that air out of our bodies. All right, Jacob, do you mind counting? All right, here we yeah. go. Breathing in, one, two, three, four, five. Hold, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We are going to wrap this one up with our stretching component. We are going to expand all those muscles in our face and our hands as we inhale. We will inhale for a count of five, stretching all those muscles, making us as big as we can. Hold for five, and finally exhale for five with the buzzing sound. Here we go. Jacob, count for me. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Hold, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Thank you, Jacob. Our next exercise is a tongue twisting one. This will help us with diction and get our voices all the way to the back of the room and still be completely understood. The exercise goes like this. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue, the tip of the tongue, articulate, enunciate, exaggerate. We're gonna keep repeating this and we're gonna get faster and faster each time until we can't do it anymore. It's gonna be silly, a lot of energy in the voice. It's okay to be silly. We're gonna be silly, right, Veronica? Yes. All right, here we go. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue, the tip of the tongue, the tip of the tongue, articulate, enunciate, exaggerate. Getting faster. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue, the tip of the tongue, the tip of the tongue, articulate, enunciate, exaggerate. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue, the tip of the tongue, the tip of the tongue, articulate, enunciate, exaggerate. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue, the tip of the tongue, the tip of the tongue, articulate, enunciate, exaggerate. Well done. Thank you. This next warm up is a little bit of a physical one. We're going to be shaking our hands and shaking our feet and counting down. Five, four, three, two, one. This is a great warm up to do with your cast. If you circle up, you're shaking your limbs, you're counting down, and you're getting your energy up for your show. It looks a little something like this. So you're going to shake what? Five, four, three, two, one. 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 Then you'll repeat that again with four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, and so on. And as you go, you get faster and faster. And you might mess up, and uh, you might look silly, but you're ready to roll, and your energy's up. All right, are we ready to try this out, Jacob? All right, here we go. And five, four, three, two, one. 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 And then everybody laughs and has a ball. For our final warm up today, we're going to repeat the siren exercise we did in the first video. We're going to start with the lowest notes we have, going all the way to the top of our register and back down again. Remember, we're constantly engaging our diaphragm muscle. All right. You ready, Veronica? Yes. Here we go. Low to high, back down to low. Ready? Breathe in. Uh. Let's try it one more time. Really engage the diaphragm one last time. Breathing in.
Very good. What is stage fright? Stage fright is the nervousness experienced before or during an appearance in front of an audience. We will be separating stage fright into four phases, avoidance, anticipation, anxiety, and panic. These phases can be debilitating for many people and prevent them from joining their community theaters. We have some tips and exercises to help you cope with and overcome stage fright associated with theatrical performances. Performance anxiety isn't unique to you. A professional career actor can still feel the jitters a novice does. The difference is a professional can cope and possibly harness the nervous energy associated with stage fright. If you begin to feel any of the four phases of stage fright, the first thing to do is breathe. Controlled, long breath. Inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. Repeat this exercise 10 times. The next strategy to combat stage fright can address the avoidance and anticipatory phases of stage fright, and it's worth saying three times. Practice, practice, practice. Yes, it is cliche, but it is plain truth. If you've practiced or rehearsed properly with focus, direction, and a willingness to make mistakes and learn from them, you should feel confident. Confidence in your work will reduce anxiety. Also, confidence in your team is crucial. When crews and casts trust each other, confidences soar, which lessens anxiety and the potential for panic. So practice, 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 and trust, trust. When we find ourselves in positions where stage fright may get its grip on us, we tend to have a lot of energy causing us to question ourselves. This can cause anxiety and panic. As performers, we need to harness that energy and turn it into a performance energy. This is possible, yet remains delicate. I try to focus on an audience's mindset when I'm about to perform. I remind myself that they want to see a good show and be entertained. Since this is why they come to the theater, this means they want performers to do well. As with most elements of theater, these techniques transfer to daily life. The anxieties we feel doing the mundane or extremes of our reality can benefit greatly from these techniques put into action. With all this talk of stage fright, we must now talk about a theatrical and pressurized experience called an audition. An audition is the first interaction an actor has in a production. Auditions require a practical demonstration of an actor's abilities. Typically, all the performing arts require an audition to secure a job or part within a production. All auditions have unique qualities, but there are some similarities. Most auditions for musicals require a singing and dancing component, and non-musicals often require a monologue. This brings us to our next section. Jacob, what is a monologue? Glad you asked, Veronica. A monologue is a long speech delivered by one actor in a play or movie. Monologues are a real test of the abilities of both actor and writer. Monologues give the audience details about the character within a play and their role within the story. Though a monologue is usually a small piece performed within a larger work, monologues performed for auditions must stand on their own. There are many different valid approaches to this process. For this video, we will discuss what works for us. I like to break a monologue up into three sections or acts. Beginning with exposition or setup, confrontation in the middle, and resolution in the end. Exposition or setup introduces the audience to the story. It's the who, what, where, when, and why section. Confrontation is as it sounds. It is the section where the stakes get high and causes a character to face obstacles. The final section, resolution, involves a climax and the falling action preceding it. Next, we look at the beats within a monologue. A beat is the smallest unit of action in a play. Within a beat, a character pursues a simple objective. Every beat has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Beats, uniquely, are not delineated by the author. Beats are discovered by actors and directors through beat analysis. To find beats, you need to know when the character's motivation or routine changes. 
If the mood of the monologue changes, then you've probably found a beat change. Now that we've briefly discussed both auditions and monologue structure, we will take you through an audition culminating in the performance of a monologue from the play Dreams in Captivity by Gabriel Davis called The Best Lazy Boy in the Galaxy. We find ourselves joining Jacob in his audition preparation. Hello, I've been rehearsing this monologue for an audition I'm about to go to. They asked that I prepare a monologue no longer than two and a half minutes and to come in casual clothing. They also asked that I arrive knowing my clothing measurements and a rough understanding of my availability over the next few weeks, as well as the performance dates. I've been polishing a monologue I previously memorized for the past couple days. Now it's time for the audition. I'll see you in there. Hello! I take it you're here for auditions? Yes, I am. Okay, great. Here is an audition form and a pencil. Go ahead and fill that out and we'll call you when we're ready. Okay, thank you. Sure. This is usually when those stage fright jitters begin. I begin to take deep breaths and go through the lines of the monologue, taking breaks and filling out my audition form. Okay, the form is filled out. I'm about to perform. I just go over my notes and my three acts that I've mapped out within the monologue. All right, we're ready for you. Okay. Here we go. All right, welcome. So this is our panel. My name is Veronica Serber. I'm producing the show. Uh, Jeff Higgins is our stage manager. Cynthia Anthony is our director. And that's Curran Bohorquez. He's already cast as our stand for Brighton Beach. So Jacob, just settle in and get started whenever you're ready. I'm Jacob Shearer. I'm auditioning for the role of Jack. I'll be performing a monologue from Dreams in Captivity by Gabriel Davis. You don't think I know what you're trying to do with this? This big noble thing you're doing for humanity? You think it's way above a Techno Hut salesman's head, right? Look, I get it because I'm a Techno Hut salesman. I'm surrounded by technology all day long, and if man can create something as amazing as a 75-inch flat screen 4K television, just imagine what we could do if we really pooled our resources and got focused. I mean, why are we always fighting amongst ourselves? Do you know why? I'll tell you why. It's the same motivation that caused man to create the 75-inch flat-screen 4K television. Man is essentially motivated, primarily motivated, to sit on his big fat butt. I'm telling you, men fight wars for the right to sit on their butt. Every man in the world wants the best Lazy Boy recliner in the galaxy to relax on, and we have it at Techno Hut! You see, we have this automated Lazy Boy recliner. It's outfitted with massagers, heating pads, a cooling unit for drinks, and it is the closest experience of pure comfort and joy a man can get short of climbing back up into his mother's womb. What am I saying? I'm saying, I'm saying we as a race of beings are still in our infancy clinging to our collective womb. And in that infancy, we perpetuate a global infancy, perpetuating global temper tantrums, and that's just the way it is. We can grow up. It's not going to happen. It's not that I don't want it to. It's just, it's a dream, Reina. It's a dream to think that man's going to get it in gear and think about something other than relaxing better. I mean, technologically speaking, we're on the cusp of it. It could happen. We could become truly independent. But first, we have to decide. We have to decide if we want world peace and the perpetuation of mankind or the lazy boy recliner. I work at the Techno Hut. Every year, I meet thousands of representative members of mankind. I know what they want. I give them what they want. You think I'm trying to cheat them out of the chance at a better life and a better world, right? But I'm only offering them a choice, Reina. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Jacob. That was really very, very good. I wanted to ask you about one of the uh, ending paragraphs. I'm going to just uh, redirect you a little bit here. So I work at the Techno Hut. This is, uh, you know, you, 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 you meet all kinds of people that are looking for relaxation. Um, you, you give people what they want, right? Remember that part? Okay. So I want you to try that this time now with a little more condescending attitude. 
uh, a little more like, you know, her pursuit for NASA is ridiculous, that what you're doing is important. I'd like your choice before. It was plain defensive, and I'm trying to see if we can find a different color, a different angle. All right. So right there, she's asking me to change tactics at the end of my monologue. She's testing me to see if I'm directable, and it's what directors do. They need to know if an actor can do something other than the, what they've been rehearsing for months. So here we go. I work at the Techno Hut. I meet thousands of representative members of humankind, and I know what they want. I give them what they want. You think I'm trying to cheat them out of a chance at a better life and a better world, right? But I'm only offering them a choice, Reina. Thank you. Now I'd like to have you read from the script, Brighton Beach Memoirs, with Curran, who is cast in the role of Stan. Stop trying to win me over. Just tell me what the problem is. I, I got fired today. What? Don't get excited. Don't, don't get crazy. Let me explain what happened. What did you do? You came in late? You were fresh to somebody? You were fresh to somebody. I, I'm not fired yet. I can still get my job back. I just, I just need you to help me make a decision. Take the job back. I don't care what it is. This is not the time for anybody to be out of work in this family. When I was 12, you gave me a talk about principles, remember? All night you waited to tell me this news? Will you at least listen to my principles? How long were you going to wait without telling me? At least listen to my principles. All right, I'll hear your principles, then you'll hear mine. Just sit back, let me tell you what happened. Either I bring in, in, in the letter of apology in the morning, or I don't bother coming in. I, I know it's late, I know you're tired, but I didn't want to do anything without asking you first. Oh, Stanley, Stanley, Stanley! I, I'm sorry, Pop. You shouldn't have swept the dirt on his shoes. I know. Especially in front of other people. I know. It's your boss, he pays your salary, he, his, his money helps put food on our table. I know, Pop. And we don't have money to waste, believe me, when I tell you that. I, I believe you, Pop. You were sick three days last year, and he only docked a day and a half's pay. You remember that? I, I know. I, I can see why you're getting all that. I, I'll, write it in, I'll write the letter. I'll do it tonight. On the other hand, you, you did a courageous thing. You defended a fellow worker. Nobody else stood up for him, right? I, I was the only one. That's something to be proud of. It was what you believed in. That's standing up for your principles. That's why I didn't want to write the letter. I, I knew you understand. The question is, can this family afford principles right now? It would make it hard, I know. Not just on you and me, but your mother, on Aunt Blanche, Nora, Lori. Eugene. Eugene. Eugene would have to get a part-time job. Time he should be using to study books and get himself somewhere. He wants to be a writer. He wants to go to college. I wish I could have sent you. I've always been sick about that, Stanley. I like working, Pop. I really do. Listen, I made up my mind. I'm gonna write the letter. I'm not saying you should. I know. It's my decision. I really wanna write the letter. And how will your principles feel in the morning? My principles feel better already. You told me you were proud of me and what I did. That's all I really care about. You know something, Stanley? I don't think there's much in college they could teach you anyway that you don't already know. Guess who I learned it from. Thanks for talking to me, Pop. I'll see you in the morning. You coming to bed? I think I'll just sit here for a while. It's the only time of day I have a few minutes to myself. Thank you, Mr. Shearer. We'll contact you when the auditions are over. Thank you very much. Thank you. See, a straightforward process that becomes a pleasant experience when you've done your preparation and utilize the techniques to persevere through the four phases of stage fright. 
Thank you for joining us for Stage Fright Auditions and Monologues. Please consider joining us in our next video of our series, Technical Theater, Directing and Producing. I'm Veronica Serber. And I'm Jacob Shearer. Hope to see you next time. Goodbye for now.